Okay, hi guys, welcome to a tutorial on installing a Linux virtual machine to use, in this case, on a Windows box, but this tutorial should work basically anywhere. And uh, so basically, why should someone install uh, Linux on their machine for development? So if you're a new developer, kind of a lot of the tutorials you'll see online will basically assume that you're running a Linux machine and you, if you're not, it will be very hard to follow the, the steps of the tutorial. So by installing a virtual machine on your Windows machine or your or your Mac, you can basically easily follow along the tutorial steps and ensure that you have the smoothest experience if you're trying to learn a new technology. So basically Linux has very good support for a lot of open source software. So stuff like Hadoop or databases like Cassandra basically were made to run on Linux. And you'll have the easiest time with things if you decide to use Linux as your operating system when you're trying to learn about those different technologies. Um, a lot of other developers find uh, Linux to be less fiddly and stuff just runs better on it. So that's a, another good reason why, as a, as a new developer, you might want to start learning about Linux. And another good reason, I suppose, is that Linux is probably the most popular operating system uh, for servers and for the cloud. So if you're doing anything that involves the cloud, Linux is a really good place to start. So basically, we'll get started. So the type of Linux we're going to install is Ubuntu. Uh, so if you go to www.ubuntu.com, I'll put the link in the in the description of the video. We can start off by just basically downloading uh, the Linux operating system. So we click download and we want to download the Linux desktop version. So we've got a couple of options here. We can download Ubuntu desktop, Ubuntu server, Ubuntu IoT or Ubuntu cloud. So they're all Linux machines, but they're basically for different purposes. So the main thing about the desktop version is it comes with a built-in graphical user interface, just like Windows has or, or Mac OS. So that's probably the most uh, friendly for a new developer. So we'll download that here. So you click here and we'll just say, thanks for downloading and it should kick off your download automatically. So you wanna save the file. And we can see up here that it's downloading now. And it's quite a big file, 1.8 gigabytes. So it takes about five minutes depending on your internet connection. So uh, in the meantime, you can look down here. We can donate to Ubuntu, which I'd recommend if you, especially if you're, um, you want to use this uh, very regularly. It's it's a very good cause. So we'll come back now uh, once this is downloaded, and we'll get stuck into installing it with VirtualBox. Okay, so we've just finished downloading the uh, Ubuntu Linux operating system. So the next thing we need to do is download the VirtualBox software that we will use to run our operating system. So just go to virtual box.org. Again, I'll leave the link in the description. And we just want to follow the link to download VirtualBox 5.2 in this case, but whatever version is the latest should be fine. So I'm running Windows. If you're running on a Mac, you might want to download a different host, but Windows host is fine for this case. And again, we just want to save the file. So this file is, uh, this software is a good bit smaller. It's only 109 megabytes, so it should install a lot faster. So once the VirtualBox software is finished download, we just want to click on it to install it. We just follow the, the prompts on the screen. All the defaults should be fine for the, for the case. Just make sure you, if you want anyway, to install it. a shortcut on the desktop, just makes it easier to find it. This is fine, you can click yes and install. So that installation should be quite quick. Once it's finished, we can just boot it up and get started into actually creating the virtual machine. So if you want to, so this is the virtual box interface. So the first thing we want to do is create a new virtual machine. So click new up here in the top left corner. And we want to give a name to our virtual machine. So we're just going to call it Ubuntu 18.04 after the name of the operating system. So we can easily tell which one it is. And it's Linux and Ubuntu 64 bit. And just make sure this is the same bit as your operating system. So most operating systems these days, especially Windows based ones are 64 bit. So that should be fine for most cases memory size we probably want to give it about two gigabytes of me memory depending on how much memory you have in your machine so we've 16 gigabytes here so two gigabytes is is not a big portion of that one thing to be careful of is just don't go over more than half of the memory available in your machine so you wouldn't in this case want to give it 12 gigabytes of memory hard disk again just create the default option create a virtual hard disk now should be fine for this case and again the default on this checkbox is fine as well virtual box disk image Again, select the default here, dynamically allocated. And we'll just go with the default here. Uh, you can change the how big you want your hard disk to be here. 
10 gigabytes should be fine for most cases, but I'm going to up it to 20 gigabytes because we might be installing some fairly large software on the box. So once that created, you can see it pops up here with the name you've given it, currently powered off. So now we want to set it up with the operating system we download from the Ubuntu website. So right click on the machine and click settings. This will take you into the settings for the particular virtual machine. So most of the settings sh should be fine, but here is where we can kind of cater different memory. So we can change the amount of memory we've given to the machine, how many cores the processor. In this case, we will just give it two. You can give it whatever you want, but again, try not to go over the half uh, mark. So in this case, don't give it more than four as that might cause your actual machine to crash, which obviously will also cause the virtual machine to crash. So the most important step is the storage. So this is where we want to attach our operating system that we downloaded. So to do this, all we have to do is click on this empty box and then over here beside optical drive, click on the disk image and choose virtual, virtual, choose virtual optical disk file. So when we click on that, it should open our uh, file explorer. In this case, we downloaded earlier the Ubuntu operating system to our downloads folder. So we can just click right on that and we can click OK. So now we can start the virtual machine now that we have it connected to the operating system and I've specified the specifications. So just again, click either right click and start or you can click start up here. So we can see now that the virtual machine is just starting. We have to go through the installation process for Ubuntu now. So we have Ubuntu on the disk we've, or the operating system we've attached, but we actually need to install that onto our virtual machine. Okay, so once the virtual machine starts, it could take a minute or two depending on your machine, it will go into the installation screens for Ubuntu itself. So I'm just going to maximize this so everybody can see. So we just want to click install Ubuntu. And obviously choose the language appropriate for yourself and choose the keyboard layout. So I'm going to choose UK layout because that's what my uh, current computer is. So it's compatible with the same uh, keyboard. Click continue. And we just want to do a normal installation and we can download updates while installing Ubuntu, so that's fine. Continue. Again, it will give you a warning here, but it's actually what we want to do is erase a disk and install Ubuntu. So again, we can click install now and that should kick off the installation process. So again, if there's any warnings come up or right change the disk, again, this should be fine, but if there's anything different goes up, just make sure to read it. Choose your time zone. In this case, I'm going to choose Dublin. And here now we can enter, put in our kind of settings for the virtual or for the Ubuntu that we're running on a virtual machine. So you can just put your name. They will then give you a default name for your computer, but I'm going to give it my own name. I'm going to call it Brian Ubuntu. And you can give it a username and a password. And I'm not going to require a password on login, so I'm just going to click login automatically. If you want to require a password on login, just click require my password to login and click continue. So we'll now go through the installation process again. This could take a couple of minutes and um, so we'll come back when we're installed. OK, so once that's installed, it should take about possibly up to five minutes. You should get a warning there, or a notification that says installation complete. So what we want to do is, in this case, we can either restart now, but the thing I do is I close out of that and close out of here and in the actual uh, virtual box settings, click power off the machine and click OK. So that will close your virtual machine and bring you back to the virtual box manager. So what we want to do now that it's powered off is restart it. So just again, click start here or else right click and click start on the machine itself. This should begin the boot up process for the machine with the operating system installed. So that should bring us into the desktop of the Linux virtual machine we've just installed. So from here, we can do any of the things we want to do on a Linux machine. So what we can do is we can right click and click open terminal and this should bring us up a, a bash terminal. So we can use all the usual bash commands here like ls to look at what uh, directories and files we have. We can make a new directory with mkdir give it a directory name, test, click LS again. We should see the test is, has appeared, our directory. We can go into that directory, CD to change directory. We can make a file, say touch test.py for a Python file. Again, LS to see what's in the test folder. You can see pi is there. We can install Python using apt.get, install Python. So this should allow us to install Python. We've seen permission denied, so we have to use sudo to get administrator 
permissions, sudo apt-get install python. So this says python's already at the newest version, so uh, we're, we, there's no need to upgrade. So basically that's it. Now we can do anything we want to do on the Linux virtual machine. It's installed in this case in our Windows box, but it should be pretty much the exact same process if you're running a Mac. And now we can get ahead and do our development on whatever we want using Linux. So thanks for watching the video, guys. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, or subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment in the box if you've got any feedback. Thanks, guys.